So today is a beautiful sunny day here in Amsterdam as you can see and one of my friends invited me over to go and sketch at his place. We're gonna socially distance, no problem, don't worry about that, but uh, I thought this would be just a nice opportunity to sketch outside and enjoy the spring sunshine. And once again, I was wrong about it. I mean, the sunshine was really lovely, but it was 11 degrees, which is not warm. And let me tell you something, whenever it gets cold, I turn into a giant word and all I do is moan and complain to everyone around me so you can imagine how fun it was for my friends painting next to me. Anyways, don't let me jump ahead of myself. I wanted to make this video to highlight some mistakes that I often make when I do painting studies in nature and how you could learn from my mistakes. But before we go there, let me answer a question you probably have now, namely Robert, your videos focus on industrial design sketching and that's why I'm here, so why would I watch this video that is all about art and painting and nature and landscape studies and whatnot? Fair enough, that is a good question. But if you are interested in design sketching, you probably want to know how to paint or render light accurately, how to apply correct colors or maybe how to create a context for your product sketch. Well. Let me tell you this, in my opinion, there are few better sources of learning and understanding light and colors than going out there and actually trying to draw what you see. Being able to pick the right colors just by looking at something will be a very valuable skill for you to apply to your future sketches. So I can really encourage each and every one of you to go out there and do plein air studies. And because I mostly use digital drawing tools, I'm going to stick to digital plein air, which means in this case, I took my iPad with me and I was using Procreate to do the study. But you can use any tablet and app combination that you have or that you feel comfortable with. So here are seven tips that should help you next time you go out and do some digital plein air. And these are not tips for getting great at digital painting, no. It's just me trying to learn from my mistakes and sharing them with you so you don't make the same ones. Okay, tip one, check the weather. Sounds silly, but trust me, it's if it's too cold and you are more concerned with shaking from the cold while you are sitting there and are barely able to hold your stylus because your hands are so cold, you won't be able to pay attention to what you want to paint. But okay, let us rather call this tip, make sure that you are comfortable with painting. But okay, let us rather call this tip, make sure that you are comfortable while you are painting. So prepare enough clothes, maybe take some fingerless gloves with you or have enough hot tea if it's uh, cold. But also if it's too hot, take some iced tea with you, maybe a small foldable fishing chair so you can sit comfortably. It is important to be as comfortable as possible while doing your studies so there is nothing that will distract you from paying your full attention to your subject and how you are painting it. One thing that ties this tip together with the next one is also that you are trying to draw on a digital screen outside. There is going to be glare and it is going to be almost impossible to see uh, out there. So you will have to find shadow or create your own shadow. Tip two is be prepared with your digital drawing tools. Something that often happens to me is that I don't know which brushes I want to use and I waste a lot of time cycling through my brushes trying to find one that has the perfect amount of texture or that is a bit softer or harder or whatever. Instead of just doing the same thing that I already do for my sketching brushes, namely I created a folder for all my sketching brushes and I can quickly switch between a rough idea sketch brush or a, a, a just general brush or a fine liner and inking brush. So I have everything at hand. So from now on, what I am going to do, at least for myself, is I will have a painting brushes folder where I keep all the paint brushes that I use most and that I enjoy most. So trust me, this will save you a lot of frustration. And another thing here is also to make sure that your device is charged. It might sound silly, but you are going to be very frustrated when you find yourself out in nature after spending some time getting there and you realize you only have a little bit of battery left. Then we come to tip three. Before you go out painting, look into color theory a little bit. I know the whole reason you're going out there is to learn about color, but it's also good to just see and understand a little bit of the theory before you just try to copy it yourself. 
I would uh, I will link two of my favorite sources to learn about color theory in the description down below but they are blender guru he usually does blender tutorials but I found this color theory video extremely useful so check the link and the other one is the fantastic Marco Bucci his videos on color are absolutely amazing I learned a lot from him I just gonna uh, link his uh, profile check it out and you'll see what I mean when I started out doing these studies, I had no idea what I was doing other than everything is lighter that is hit by the light and everything is darker that is in shadow, right? It's just logical. But there are so many little things and nuances that you can learn. For example, if something is hit by sunlight, it usually gets slightly desaturated. So you have to bring the saturation down when you choose your color palette. And if, if something is shadow, you gain a little bit more saturation. But this can also change depending on the bouncing light that the colors that hit the shadow. So the shadow actually also can desaturate it. And then you have color temperatures like warmer colors and colder colors. And you have to think about all these things. So make sure to take a look at the two guys I mentioned uh, to enrich your color understanding before you go out there and actually start learning. Tip four, I mentioned colors because that is what I suck at most aside from anatomy. The whole purpose for me to go out and do these studies is to understand color and light. That is the reason why I go out to do plein air studies. So keep in mind, you are not doing these to create perfect replicas of nature. No, you are trying to learn something about how the world works. You are trying to understand something and that is what you have to concentrate on. If it's perspective, make sure that you concentrate on that. If it's color, make sure that it's that. Don't expect masterpieces and don't expect to be able to finish your painting all in time. It's about learning, not about showing it off on your social media. So don't get frustrated. It's really for you to learn from. Tip number five, painting unlike drawing will not give you immediate results. So if you are like me and you are used to always sketching and using only lines, you are used to produce something that is recognizable after a couple of strokes with your pen. Unless you are a naturally gifted painter, you are not going to be able to do that with painting. There is always going to be a long period of, oh my God, this sucks. I'm never going to be good at painting before all of a sudden things start to fall into place and you start to see the things that you are actually creating. And for me, this is about the 70% mark through the, per, uh, the process. This can be different timeline for everyone, so just stick in there and don't be discouraged by what you see on the canvas because it doesn't look like what you were trying to paint. You will get there. Tip number six. If you can go with friends who are just as passionate or more as you are about painting, that is fantastic. There is nothing better than seeing the same subject being painted by someone with a different point of view. You can learn from each other, you can identify your and each other's mistakes easier, you can ask if they see the same colors or if you don't see a color, you can ask them what color they see. And you can push each other just a tad bit further. Also. It's just more fun if you can chat a little bit to each other while drawing or painting. And tip number seven, apply what you have learned. You can go out there and paint nature over and over again, but if you don't apply it, it won't bring you anything. If in one of your painting sessions, you realize that there is some purple in the shadow because the water reflected in a weird way on the tree trunk, Think of this next time when you are painting in nature and are not sure what color to paint in a shadow. But also bring in a bit of this color into your boat sketch when you are doing an industrial design drawing. So meaning just take that knowledge and apply it when you sit at your desk and doing industrial design sketches. Don't forget that you are doing these plein air studies to learn. So take what you have learned and try applying it to everything you do. That is what is going to get you better. And yes, there are a million other tips out there, but these should be enough for you if you want to get started. These are all things that I neglect or forget about quite often. So be smarter than me and pay attention to these little things and you should be already a step ahead of me. I hope you enjoyed uh, this little video of mine and you took away something from it. A huge thanks to my friends Lloyd and Eric who are amazing artists and who always help me and give me tips on how to improve my stuff and also for putting up with my complaining during a cold 
but lovely painting session. Make sure to go and check out their art stations that I have linked in the description uh, below and be amazed by their fantastic art. That was it for this week. Be safe, have a great time and see you folks next time. Bye bye.